All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I want to do an overview of a Rust crate called Validator. And the plan that I have is every week, once a week, I want to introduce you guys to a new Rust crate. So if you've been following Rust for a while, you probably know that in the last few years, Rust and the entire ecosystem have matured and evolved a lot. So there's just a ton of different crates for various purposes, utilities, uh, libraries, etc. So, like I said, every week I would like to do an overview and an introduction of different crates. And um, for today's video, what I want to do is I want to cover the validator crate. And the validator crate is, like the name says, it's for validation. So if you're coming from the web development JavaScript uh, world, then it's basically the same thing as Zod. But the reason why I like it so much is it uses macros and derives so that it makes putting constraints on your objects super easy and super straightforward. Now, to make this overview um, kind of... Uh, flesh out more what it's actually like to use. I'm going to do it within the context of a Actix web service. So that's why I've created this project and it's going to be available in my GitHub and I'll provide a link in the description. Okay. Now, before we get going, I just wanted to remind you guys I did write a book, Full Stack, React, TypeScript, and Node. Um, it's been around for a while now, but I think it's still relevant. Um, if you're looking for a great book on full stack, end-to-end -end web development, then uh, check out the book. All right, so let's get started. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create an instance of that service. So this is going to be a, a super simple Actix web service. It's going to have only one route in it. So we're putting it on all of the IPs and then port 4000. And in case it fails, We'll just give that message. Okay. So then we need the actual app instance inside of it. And then we need at least one route. So now most of the squigglies go away. So what I want to do is I want to create a route handler with an input object that needs to be validated, but I want to make that object to be a little bit more fleshed out. So it's going to have a username, it's going to have an email that's required, and then for now it's going to have an age. So then this is the object that's going to be sent in by the user request. Uh, it needs to be validated. And so we need to create, in this case, a post request. So I'll just name it the same thing as the route handler. And like I said, it's coming from the JSON body. And to keep things simple, we'll just do a HTTP response. Now I do need to give it the deserialize in order to be um, taken in through the JSON body. Now in this case, we're not ready to actually do any validation. So I'm gonna hard code. I'm gonna hard code 
an error response. Let me just get rid of all of these warnings. Okay. So it looks okay. Let's just try and do a test run. So actually, let's add this. <clears throat> So this is going to fail immediately. So I just want to make sure we can see <coughs> the actual response coming in or the, the input coming in. Okay, so I've already put in the URL. So we have our internal server error. And then if we come back here, we can see the input that was provided. So then if I exit and I actually set up the validator, the first thing that I need to do is impl or derive off of the trait, the validate trait. And to show you how easy it is all you have to do for the fields that you want to validate and constrain with some mechanism is you just start off by indicating that, um, indicating an attribute macro. And then by doing that, you're telling the system once you run the validation that this particular field needs to be validated in this way. So in this case, we're gonna do a minimum number of characters and then we're going to do a maximum number the other thing that's great about this crate is that it has built-in validators for standard use cases so in this case you have an email validator that checks for stuff like the at symbol but you're going to have also other other validators that are built in like this would be super common obviously um, URLs as well so that makes things very convenient and in this case we have to use a range because this is a number so what we want to do is we want to put in a minimum age that is required in order to use this web service. So that's what we've done here. And in order to make this actually run, we have to take the input that we want to validate. And then we have to execute or, or trigger the actual validation. And in this case, if it's successful, then I don't need to get anything back. So I'm just going to say created successfully. And then in the event of failure, I do want to indicate um, what specifically went wrong. So what's going on here is not only am I indicating that an error happened, but by using this function errors in plural, I'm able to get back every single field that failed their validation. 
So if only one field uh, failed, then I would get back only one item in this list. Whereas if all of them failed, then I would have the indication for every single field. So if I ran this, So if I ran this with a failure condition for every field, then I should be able to see each field that failed plus whatever the particular error was, right? So in this case, you've got this, um, the constraint itself, right? So this is supposed to be an email, but there's no at symbol in there. Um, the username is supposed to be of a certain length minimum and maximum, right? So obviously four char characters are there, but you need five as a minimum. And then over here, the minimum age is 18, but you have 17 that was um, submitted. So if you think about it, like the amount of code that we had to write in order to get all of these ranges and lengths and even um, particular types of values constrained and validated is pretty cool actually. Now on top of this, there's obviously going to be scenarios where you, you can't just use the built-in stuff that they have, right? You have to come up with your own custom thing because it's some particular business case or something like that, right? So then what you would do is let's say for example, it's a password. So then what you would do is you would create another validate call. Um, and in this case, I'm also going to give it a minimum requirement. So let's say max and then 20. And then for my own custom validation, I would create my own custom validator function. So that function <clears throat> would take in the password. And in this case, even though it's a string, we would take it in as a string slice. And then I need to return upon success. I would return again, empty or void. And then I would return a validation error if it did fail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the constraints to be that the system has numbers or the password has numbers. And also that the password has symbols in it. So obviously I'm using regular expressions. Now, in the case of this, I just got this off ChatGPT, so I'm just gonna paste it in here. Okay, so then now we have our two constraints, but I need to check them and I need to actually run them. So we have our password, but we need both of these to be true. So if it is true, then I'm going to return empty. If it's false, then I'm going to return an error. Okay, so then the squigglies went away. Just double checking that I don't have any failures anywhere. So we run it again. Go back to Postman. Now this will fail outright, outright because a necessary field is not there. 
So I'm going to add it, but I'm going to add it with an invalid password. And then we'll make all of these valid so that we can kind of focus on the password section. <clears throat> okay, so we can see that the password is the problem, but we can also see that there are two constraints that are listed here. So we have the regular built-in one for length, which I also failed, and then we have the custom one, which I also failed, right? So if I go in here, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and I do this, then we should have only one left, which is the custom. And now, although I put in the numbers, I didn't put in any symbols. So if I put in like a number sign, the error should go away. Yeah, so this was a quick introduction into the validator. Like I said, I plan to do these once a week and you'll be introduced to various new crates that perhaps you weren't aware of. Um, but I'll try to do them within the context of um, how they would normally be used so that it makes more sense. So uh, thanks for watching the video. Like the video, subscribe. See you next time.